Hi, I'm Taryn from Hubbers Flooring and Soft Furnishings. We are passionate about creating interior spaces as unique as you. At Hubbers, we're on a mission to revolutionise the home renovation experience for our community. Come in and see us at Champion Road, Richmond, and start your journey from the ground up with us today. So, Paul, good morning. Morena. Morena. Good to see you. So, you're welcome. Um, so, big change is coming for you and Victory Boxing after, I think, 11 years of really being legends. How are you feeling? Tell, talk us through the changes that are coming and, and how you feel about it. Hey, yeah. Um, what did I met? Yeah, well, look, we've, um, yeah, 11 years. It's been a very, very full on intense time. We're really proud of what we've done. And, um, but as, you know, during that time, the, the you know, Victory Boxing growing and growing and growing, we just cover so many different groups. And what's happened in recent times is that I've managed to, um, step back a little bit from the day-to-day -day stuff we've got another you've got a young guy uh, harry that we've brought in to do a lot of work which is great so i'm sort of working on a lot more projects around victory boxing and um yeah i'm in there all the time because i love it but you know i've got options to work on some other initiatives that uh victory it's come out of victory boxing so exciting right so working on the business rather than working in the business that's right and that's right so i mean you know and so many people face that these days where you know you're um get sort of pulled in so many directions, I guess. Mm. And um, over a period of time, it's sort of, even though you could be could totally passionate about something, it can wear you down a bit. So um, I'm really fortunate, actually. I've got a wonderful board. And uh, we're talking about getting sort of a, another person in there for quite some years. Right. So now we're doing it. Is there a bit of uh, a risk, though? Because, I mean, to a lot of Nelsonians, you are victory boxing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, like I said, I'm there all the time. Um and still do, you know, I'm, I'm there every day, all that type of thing. But just because it give, gives, gives me that feeling where, you know, I'm not so locked in, I guess, and I can sort of explore some other things and, um, and just spreading the load. Yeah. And, you know, what and what I love about that too is, is now it's great. Everybody we bring in, whether it's volunteers or someone like Harry, they get this wonderful opportunity to, to grow and experience it and add, add to it as well mm. you know so, so yeah. when we first met you were i think uh, the title was um assistant principal yeah at victory yep. primary school yeah yeah yep. victory primary school and and my kids thought you had the course karen nelson right or two yeah right. i think it was a holden wow yeah okay. okay. that, yeah that was pretty flash yeah and right. then and then you gave that all up yeah and and you went and got into boxing yeah um does it feel like i mean to me 11 years is given what you've achieved, given what Victory Box has achieved, it doesn't seem that long. Right. Does it feel like a long time to you? Yeah, I mean, I, I, in some ways, um, well, firstly, you know, I do remember that car. Mm. It was a cool car. <laughs> yeah, it was. Anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I was, I've always been really passionate to help. Yeah. So the Victory, the, the boxing, you know, we had these young young guys at, at Victory Primary School who were, you know, had, you know, huge potential. And, and you know, but, through their sort of, you know, situations they were put in, you know, through no fault of their own, they're making some decisions that weren't, weren't, weren't positive. So we, that's why we got involved and, and, um, and they actually wanted to do the boxing. And I look, it was just this thing where I just followed my gut, just followed my gut. Actually. I mean, if you wrote down, okay, should I stay in, in education and move into principalship or whatever, or should I start this, you know, should I push on with this thing that had no money and no, 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 anything, no background, no structure. Um, but something inside me said, this is really positive for these guys. And, um, yeah, so it was just sort of a, one of those moments where I just followed my gut. It, it, yeah. it sort of made no, no real re rational sense. Right. Did your gut tell you that you were going to end up creating something this big? No. Like back then? No. no, not at all. We were literally just helping, but you know, we have people with Parkinson's, which is a massive group. People with cancer survivors. We have every sports team you could think of coming. Um, we have around 500 kids a year coming mm. so um it, it's literally it feels like it's 24 7 so yeah. you know that question about i mean at it, it, um 10 11 years you know it's been uh, i look back on that time i think well that's gone gone fast but a lot's happened and it was just this this trajectory i mean it just kept getting bigger and bigger yeah. and we had some of the events i remember you coming to one that um out at six to the fight for victory yeah. yeah and our last one was 2016 and that was just you know 2000 people 
you know, wonderful Kevin Hopgood did all the food for. I mean, it was just a massive event. So um, all those things were obviously great for for Victory Boxing and, and gave us a good good boost. But mm. we get great community support. I like to think people sort of just feel that we do what we say and we we're real about what we're doing and really very passionate about it. So, so if you weigh it up, when when you think about what you've been doing, how much of it has been about sport, and how much of it has been about mental health? Oh, uh, so. I would say, well, look, it's all about people feeling good about themselves, and so I mean, we have a we have a really good competition team. But out of those five hundred kids, I mean, most of them are there. No, ninety five percent of them, as well as everyone else that come in, are there before. Um, you know, you, you, so when you talk about mental health, you know, and it's you know it's a tough old world out there these days. It's all sorts of uh, curveballs coming at us, but um, you know that. Move, you know that movement that you do, and, and boxing training is real, really invig, you know invig, invigorating training. And we have an environment um, where you know people can just be themselves, and they get welcomed. And it doesn't matter if you're um, a high end sports person or have never even even done any sports for ten or any activity for ten years, you get treated the same at Victory Boxing. Um, so we at, like our adult fitness classes, we'll get thirty per group um, to us all day, every day. So just yeah, massive numbers come through. But, you know, I mean, we've got, you know, we can cater for that high-end sports. You know, we have the, um, you know, all the top rugby guys and, you know, the Giants, which I love having them in. All these guys come in and, and we, you know, and it's great sessions. They keep coming back year after year. But largely it's about people. So we actually, I guess the best way to say it is we have a, we have a, bit, of a bit of a saying down at Victory Boxing that everybody has a fight going on, you know. So whether it's going out into the boxing ring and earning and winning a title, mm-hmm. Or whether it's actually for some people, you know, say a young person who's got some uh, issues, mental health, depression, getting out of bed could be their fight, mm. and um, we're just as proud of them getting up, getting going about their day than yeah. the person who's gone off to some tournament and won a nice won some sort of a title. So, so, so when you kicked the whole thing off, it was because there were kids with issues, with challenges that you could see. Um, I know over the years, uh, every t- every now and then we'll run into each other. And you'll talk, you'll just sort of say, oh, you know, some of the stuff we're facing, it's like, it's massive in terms of the challenges these kids are facing. Um, were, were the other issues that are out there bigger than you realised when you started Victory Boxing? Um, not necessarily. Obviously, you know, working at Victory Primary School and, and you know, working at um, in that space anyway. I was probably surprised, though, that Victory Boxing would, would be such a, a drop-in safe place for people to come and share all of that you know um so that surprised me so you know and um so for example at the moment uh an initiative that we're looking to start this year and this sort of, sort of sort of thing i'm talking about that i'll be working more on is we're getting a council looking at getting a councillor at victory boxing right so we've got a space organized and working through all the logistics of that so because it's such an area of people feeling safe enough to share we're just sort of taking that to another level and taking the pressure off yeah. Well what, well, what about that pressure? I mean, who do you go and talk to? Um, I've got a few, few, few guys I lean on. Mm-hmm. Um, but certainly, um, I'm sort of wired up in a certain way where I've got to really actively look after myself mm-hmm. and, you know, learning to say no, all those sorts of things. And that sort of stuff you experience too, you know, with victory boxing, the, the more it's grown, the more people have come into. You know, we work with pretty much every agency and social agency you can think of. So, um, and we like to help make a difference. So, um, yeah, that adds adds a lot of pressure. And also you sort of work at a standard that you maintain, want to maintain, and that's mm-hmm. also adds a lot of sort of personal pressure to yourself. But um, no, I've got some really good people that I'll catch up with, you know, regularly for breakfast or something and mm-hmm. sort of do it early in the day. Um, I've done a lot of self-work on... Um, in recent times, the last sort of 12, 18 months or so, doing a lot of cold water, cold water work and things. Oh, yeah. Talking about, you know, getting out of the beach at silly hours. And I've just uh, bought myself an ice bath. So I've been okay. doing some ice baths with a good friend, Jamie, for quite some time and um, and really focusing on breathing. So, yeah, always learning about um, what you need to do to keep yourself in a pretty good, pretty good space. Because mm-hmm. there's always going to be workload. There's always going to be stress. There's always going to be, you know, drive to to achieve things so and that's all good but it's just about how you um you know reach out and and find ways to kind of keep yourself well yep yeah have you heard of stats 
Have you heard about the documentary Stuts? Yeah. So Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill, I've seen psychologist. that. Psychologist. Yeah. 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 He's, he's, he's got Parkinson's too. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen that, yeah. And and his take, yeah, one of his things he says is, you know, there are things that you have to accept. It's kind of, kind of Buddhist, but he says, you know, um, I think it's, so there'll always be difficulties. Life can be painful. There's always uncertainty and you have to work. Yeah. Yeah. Are those sort of three things that you think about as well in your own way? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So exactly, yeah, so... Those things are there, mm. you know, we sort of, you know, did a bit of work recently about your nervous system and your sympathetic and parasympathetic and, um, you know, being in that sympathetic and sort of fight or flight space, there's, there's, there's value to that, mm. but you problem with these days that we're so wired into, mm. you know, phones and everything like that, that we stay in that high adrenaline state. And I've been in that high adrenaline state for a long, long time. And, and over time, the body does start to feel the effects. So it's about, um, so it starts to say like it's about actually just re just regulating so whether you're doing breathing uh, taking time out getting away from your phone um socializing yep. you know it doesn't mean necessarily going out on it having a big night on the source or anything, but just just catching up with friends and just changing that vibration and chatting about something different and get whatever's in your mind uh sort of change that up a little bit so um yeah not really actively uh because you know i i don't you know, it's about, it's also like, we, I'm, I'm always encouraging people. I'm always giving advice for people yeah. to look after themselves. Yeah. Yet yeah. yeah, sometimes you look after everyone else than yourself. So I'm, I've made a real, real change to have that time out, take time for myself, um, cool. all those sorts of things. So uh, you mentioned stress, mm. putting on events yeah. is stressful. Yeah. Uh, you and I were part of the very first, yes. um, dancing for a cause uh raising funds for the hospice which yeah. was classic and we didn't organize that no there was a little bit of stress involved with yeah. dancing in front of yeah. all those people at the well I, remember, so I was i was kind of enjoying it and then after the the dress rehearsal yeah i was after that i was like that night i was like yeah this is real yeah i had a bit of it that was that was stressful yeah and fun and fun yeah but i loved it i loved it actually i, I loved it i, I loved it. it i loved it i had people coming up to me that we know that you know afterwards who, who came up to me and said um i just want you to know matt that um i'm really impressed i would never ever do anything like what you've just done in front of people like that i would never even do it you know because you don't it's not something most people do like i danced the tango in front of 1200 people and you did the i did a jive the jive yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i look yours was a lot more fun mine, mine was very dramatic i died yeah. at the end of mine yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. With the blood, emotional. Yeah, yeah. That's, I, my, I loved it. Yeah, and I thought Emma was amazing to bring all that. Yeah, so so huge amount of stress goes into mm. our events. You were putting on these fight for victories, yeah. uh, which in themselves, I'm sure, would be you know a, a amazing a huge amount of work. Yeah. But the thing that I always wondered about them is there was also an element of danger, yes. and and. I, do you ever think that you're kind of lucky you got through those without anyone getting seriously hurt? Really funny you say that because I was talking to someone about that recently. Yeah, really recently. So I was always, you know, the, the great event and the massive events to put on. There's so many uh, components to get right. And their last one I thought was was amazing. But um, I have no real appetite to do those do mm -hmm. again. Um, There's a guy I know from uh, Christchurch City Council, Yanni Johansson. Johansson. And he went in at one of those, the Christchurch equivalents, and got knocked out. Yeah. You know, and we didn't see that happen, I don't yeah. think, which is good. So we, you know, and, and look, you, you, you slave over getting all the um, matchups and all those sorts of things as accurate as you can, but there's always going to be the element. You're yeah. And, and and around the country, there's been some been some sort of, you know, um, serious incidents. So look, and, you know, after, I remember the night after, you know, so the Sunday night, I was ringing every person that fought for us in that last one just a check in on everybody yeah because although you know we we're raising money for a, for a cause victory boxing which mm. i'm so you know obviously believe in so much but um but in saying that um someone getting injured would just be from doing so we, we've each the last couple of years we've done these really amazing dinners mm. which have been great and um you know victory boxing gets to share what we do we actually raybon can has been the yeah. bsc for the last couple of years yep and um and Cohen Holloway came. He was, I don't know if you know Cohen. He's an actor. He was just hilarious. So we've had some wonderful. So we've changed it to that. A, mm. the resource and time to put those events on to the standard that we like is just too much now. And secondly, 
yeah, just want to raise money for a for a cause. But um, yeah, there, 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 you know, there is a uh, a factor there. So on that safety issue, do do you ever worry that people are learning, you know, fighting skills at victory boxing, and then they go and use them in the playground, on the street, yeah. at home? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we um, yeah, that's certainly in the early days. There's a lot of talk about that. Um, the reality of that is, you know, we we've got our competition group that learn really, you know, how to compete. A lot of the other guys in there are just learning some basics of how to stand and and really fitness and invigoration. So, but we also have lots of um, structure. So victory boxing is based on four values, you know, respect, responsibility, determination, and caring. Mm -hmm. So those values, um, everyone that walks into victory boxing, you know, those values are, you know, uh, put onto everybody in the gym and out of the gym. Mm -hmm. So um, if there was a young person that came in and there was an incident, then I'd actually go, yep, and be part of a solution. And that's happened? Probably about once or twice in the other five, ten years. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so we're really, you know, really, really fortunate. So I'd like to think that we... Um, you put that out there mm -hmm. very, very carefully. So because, you know, everyone that comes in, we actually want to make a difference too. We don't just kind of go through the motions. So if there is a situation, we we, we jump on that straight away and, yep. and um, really, really good look into it. But yeah, learning how to, the reality is that learning how to box takes a long time, you know, so you're not going to come to a couple and get out there and be this, you know, warrior. warrior. Yeah. So yeah, it just doesn't quite work that way. Mm. Um, it's more about getting that young person, if that was the case, You've been triggered. You're angry. What's happening for you? How can we fix that? Right. Um, no. So yeah, like yeah, yeah. Like I said, early days, there were some people saying, "Oh, you're just going to teach them how to fight," mm. but it certainly doesn't doesn't quite work that way. And if you come into the gym, you'll see it's not our sure. It's not the whole vibe at all. Mm. Um, obviously, you you train men and women. Yeah. But uh, a lot of guys, a lot of young guys, and you're a teacher. You've been a teacher yourself. And uh, you, when you look at that, the masculinity that's coming through, you know. Um, we had coffee this week and we got talking about this, this topic, you know, I, I worry a bit about where our young men and not so young men are mentally mm. at the moment. And, um, I'm wondering if you've sort of had some thoughts about that as well in terms of what you're seeing and, um, what you, what you make of how our particular our younger men are doing. Yeah. I mean, you know, the great thing, and, and there's so many sort of different people out there working in this space, that mental health, for example, or, or, or identity. But you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's it's well known that that Kiwi bloke sort of stuff. Mm. And and the reality of that is, what I've observed over time is, you know, people that kind of act all staunch and strong, you're actually just kind of masking something. You know, you're just, you know, you're not. So, um, you know, what we encourage is, and and when we talk to these young, we actually get them in the gym moving mm. and sort of exercising and during that time you can actually get in so you said that starts to take down some barriers and then you can get in beside them and start having a bit of a chat about whatever's happening for them and and, and what's sort of what's on their mind and what's worrying them and what's making them act in certain ways but yeah i mean you know the, the great thing is um is talking to these to, to these guys and, and, and it's actually it actually takes strength to be vulnerable and open mm. and share what's going on for you mm. you know uh, so, you know, we had, uh, a friend of mine, Matt Brown, who wrote the book, she's not your rehab. We had him in the gym and is that exactly the same sort of thing, you know, sort of dealing with your stuff and not, you know, taking that trauma and becoming negative or whatever it is, maybe, you know, maybe, or if you are feeling down, talk about it. Ooh. Cause if you keep it in here, it just, it doesn't go away. Yeah. It doesn't go away. It just it gets bigger and bigger to a point that, yeah, you know, you might be self-medicating or. No, you actually, you, 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 you'll do something that you regret. So we do a lot of talk in the gym to try and get people to be open mm -hmm. and, and, and hang around, you know, have a, have a crew that you can be open with. So we actually have a, we actually have a, 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 um, a quote on the wall at Victory Boxing called, um, notice who's in the locker room after you lose, not after you win. And that's from Angelo Dundee, what yeah. Muhammad Ali's trainer. So when things aren't going well, that crew around you. Are the, is the crew that you need to share with and, and the, the, other, the other people there for you. Yeah. So that's the one, that's that's the one, you know. That's so funny, that quote. It's a great quote. Um, after the election last year, yeah. where I came second in the mayoral race, I got that message from a friend of mine 
Right. And I thought, oh, that's very nice. And he said, you know, if you ever want to you know, hang out, just, you know, howl at the moon or have a pint to let yeah. me know. And I said, thanks, man, that'd be awesome. Yeah. You know, what are you up to next week? He didn't get back to me. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I ran into him in the supermarket last week and we are going to catch up. Great. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, that's, you know, we talk about it. And, and, you know, a lot of these young young people who they, they might have um, come to the attention of the police, for example. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you don't do those things when you're feeling good about yourself, yeah. feeling valued and feeling um, there's people in your corner, mm-hmm. you know. So, um, you know, we, we do a lot of work around making sure the people around you are people that you can be yourself with, can be vulnerable with, can share things with, can say no to. Yep. All that sort of stuff. So how do, apart from getting everyone to do virtual boxing, yep. how do you think we can get more of this going on with our young men? Oh, no, I think it's just, um, I mean, it's the whole... I mean, the difficulties are, you know, is, is it sort of starts with those sort of home, you know, like we, we try and get, we've had initiatives at the gym as well, where we've brought, um, the kids in and we've identified some kids that we've bought, like it might be a, um, a, a, and you know, like a, a father or a grandfather, someone that, you know, a prominent male figure in their life and we get them to do a workout together. We might have some all black cereal, that, you know, or, or where it may be. And, um, and they'll train together and then we do a barbecue. And, and the purpose of that is to try and get that message going further that you can sort of get out there and do some exercise with each other and do some positive things and sort of share that. Um, and we've done it with the girls as well, you know, that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's not an easy fix because mm. it's, you know, it goes right through society. But it's just about getting that message out there really that and it can be, you know, like New Zealand with sports and those sorts of things and getting... And, and there are a lot of players now who are being a little bit more open about yeah. about things. So, you know, but I think those sort of people, you know, I mean, sharing. I did find it kind of classic that someone came out recently and they were the first gay all black, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they played rugby in the 70s or something. Yeah, like 80s, a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, really? Yeah. Wow. And it was yeah. like, it was a really big story. Now, I'd say there's probably one or two gay All Blacks in every World Cup squad or more, you know. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that we're, we're like, that was a big, yeah. big deal yeah. just tells me how far we've still got to go. Yeah. Long way to go. Yeah. Long way to go. And, and, uh, and, and the crazy thing, well, crazy, how good is that for a word? But like, the, the thing about it is that everybody, so many people are struggling. Yet so many people are too scared to share, you know? Yeah, well, and, and for us, mm, you know, I mean, for some 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 situations they'll, they'll share, but oh, you know, it, it seems to be a badge so, of honour of just working yourself into the no. into the ground. You know? So, so, so is sport for a lot of young men, particularly, the answer, or is it part of the problem? Because a lot of the of what you're talking about, I think, comes through these sort of you know stereotypical yeah. characters that we see in our major sports. You know, where people are tough and yeah, they don't yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't share, they don't allow themselves to be vulnerable, all those things. Yeah. yeah. But well, what I'm seeing too, in, in terms of that sport, is um, see a lot of people are moving into like mountain biking or mm. the other really, really good. So I mean, that, that, I think that says a lot. Mm. I think that says a lot too. So you know, getting out and out into the sort of out into the bush and that sort of thing, and sort of you know, getting out into nature mm. is 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 a big. I, I, I think one of the things that it's about is just sounds simple, but just talking to kids. Yeah, from a young age, you know. Right from when they have this first making noises, Normal parents things. talking to the yeah. kids. Now that sounds like a crazy thing to say because, of course, everyone talks to their kids. But you know, um, we live in a world now where you, both parents have to work, yeah, uh, just to get by. Yeah, that's just a huge amount of time and energy that yeah. they don't have for their kids. Or solo parent, so oh, solo parent, unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. So I think I think that's you know, I always go back to that, just finding the time and making sure there's the time to talk 100 percent. and that's like you know when, we, when i spoke earlier about just you know getting that prominent person in their life to come and tra- you know they can mm. train at for football and that's encouraged them so you know when they go home they might go for a walk up the, up the grandparents yeah. might go and kick a ball around at victory square or whatever it may mm. be opposed to being stuck in home not putting that time and energy and talking and just you just and, and those sorts of things so there's no magic wand um but you know it's just about making those conversations as normal yeah as possible yeah you know and that's up to everybody really you know hear it in the schools and hear it at home and in all the sports clubs do you think you'd ever go back to teaching i don't think so okay i mean sort of what what we're doing is is kind of all the stuff yeah. that i 
Um, um, yeah, I might get cabin fever. I think I went back to a classroom. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Tough job. Um, Tough job. Tough job. And so 11 years from now, where do you see victory boxing? Oh, I think, um, got 10. 10? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just, I mean, the, 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 the big challenge was to kind of maintain that, that standard really. Mm. So no, I think, um, we've, we've talked a lot about, um, branching out mm -hmm. and setting up some victory boxings around, oh, yeah. around, around top of the South, that type of thing. A lot of really, um, a lot of momentum in that conversation before COVID and then COVID mm. came, so we've kind of just gone, Phew. let's take a breath. But, um, I think. That type of thing, I think, sort of expansion there. So we, we get asked all the time to um, look at having picture boxings around here and there. Yep. But it's always about the people involved. Yep. The model's the model, but it's actually the people involved, and it's always about the people around. And, and do you think it'll always be boxing, or could victory become something else, victory basketball? Could be, yep, mm. could be. I mean, um, victory boxing kind of has a bit of a, like you say, yep. connect for people. But um, I spoke at an event recently, and... They were saying, you know, you could, it doesn't have to be called victory boxing, you know, because because we work with so many other things. So yeah, there's always been those chats. Mm. So but what we've found, what we've sort of found, what I found is has been a natural progression to it all. Mm. So like you said, you know, did you think it would look like this in ten years? So I never said right year three, year five, whatever. I never did that. Yeah. We just kind of followed the community, what they needed. Uh, when the Parkinson's group started, this this guy came in and he um, was talking about his wife had mm. Parkinson's. I'd been doing a bit of research on it. There was a um, Parkinson's group in Indianapolis called Rocksteady Boxing. Mm. I was just curious, watching about a program for Parkinson's. And um, so when they came in, I went, well, okay. We could. So it's all been sort of a natural progression. So we'll just keep, our, keep doing what we're doing and keep our standards high. And we're still passionate as day one. Um, I've got to ask, you know, I've always meant to ask you this, but um, Parkinson's, yeah. I think it's fantastic what you guys are doing. Uh, I also, in the back of my mind, I, I seem to remember that Muhammad Ali, the yeah, yeah. most famous boxer, yeah. suffered from Parkinson's disease. Yeah. And it might have been the boxing that did it. Might have been, yeah. Yeah. So, could have been. Can you yeah, turn through that? Bit, yeah, I know, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, these guys that come in, they come in twice a week and they're their favorite group. So, yeah, what happens when you become unwell like that? Your life, your will gets quite small. Mm. And these guys come and they just, yeah, we get some, um, and they choose the music. Oh, yeah, we play music down there. So there's a lot of Willie Nelson and uh, that's a, kind of a country sort of a mm -hmm. angle to it, which is quite good. But um, yeah, and they come and they and they so just does the socialising of it, and we get and we get them down there, and both parts of the brain are working, and no. physios down there working on it. Are there any old boxers in that group? No. Okay, no. that's a good sign. No, no, no old boxers. Mm. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, they're, they're wonderful, wonderful guys. Yeah, but Arnie, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I don't know. Not every box is going to get Parkinson's, but yeah, it'd have to be something. Um, do you, are you a fan of Ted Lasso? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, new, new season's out. Yeah. Season three, they say it's going to be the last. Yeah. But he had a quote. I'm not giving a huge thing away here, yeah, but yeah. in the, the first episode, he's just sort of, you know, yabbering away like he does. Yeah, yeah. And he talks about, I'm going to I'm gonna be like Muhammad Ali. I'm going to, um, what was it? fly like a butterfly sting Thank like you. a bee yeah. and then he says but unlike a bee i'm not going to die after i've used my stinger yeah. i'm going to keep stinging yeah. and dancing and singing and flying and singing and i thought well, yeah good point you know yeah, it's yeah, a great yeah, quote yeah, yeah. but you know you sting once if you're a bee it's yeah. all over yeah yeah i said um kevin costner actually he, he spoke at ali's funeral oh yeah you should watch he, amazing speech yeah you should watch that one okay youtube it up so right. yeah kevin costner ali's funeral is a great old oh, love it love it out yeah um, hey, uh, really great to chat to you, Paul. Thank you very much for your time, and thanks for all the amazing mahi you've been doing in the Fakatu community. Um, I, I think it's firstly, I'm, I'm, I think it's fantastic that you're taking a sideways step, because there has to have been a lot of pressure on you over the last eleven years, and you've, you've given a huge gift to this community, and I think it's great that you're now going to be able to continue that gift, but in a new way. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's. Uh... Uh, we're very proud and I, I really appreciate this. I mean, the support we've got is just overwhelming. And, you know, we've got volunteers down there that have been there since day one. Yep. Shaz, Shaz Nicol, I mean, mm. people like that, mm. just amazing. So uh, it's been a great, great journey and great adventure and more to come. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and speaking of things to come, you're going to turn 50 soon. 50 in July. Yeah. What are you going to do? 
Well, I might be, don't know, I might be having a wee party. I think okay. I might have a wee party. Uh, I wasn't going to, but there's a few people making sure I do. Oh, good. Um, yeah, and jump in your ice bath. I'll be back here. I've bought myself an ice bath. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, just embrace that. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Getting older is good. 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 I'm, I'm 54, mate. The alternative's not great, of course. It, so, yeah. It is good. so much better than the alternative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks heaps, Paul. Sure, mate. Thank you, Sharon. Sure.